Amen. Amen. If you will, take your Bibles tonight and turn to the book of John, the Gospel of John, John chapter 4. We're preaching through the Gospel of John <clears throat> on uh, Wednesday nights. The Lord has been blessing and honoring uh, our time through the Scripture, just preaching word for word, verse for, by verse. And if you're watching through Liberty Live tonight, we want to uh, just welcome you to join us, uh, not only in worship, but in uh, the reading of the Word. So you take your Bible, take your cell phone or your laptop, whatever the case may be, and pull up uh, the Scripture tonight in John chapter 4, verse 46. John 4, verse 46. Uh, I do want to make this announcement. Uh, Keisha had asked us to make this, but uh, this Saturday morning, I think it's Saturday morning it is, <clears throat> this Saturday morning, the Carnesville Community Food Distribution will be uh, distributing food at 8.30 this Saturday morning at Carnesville Elementary School. Uh, and that is the, uh, that's the old, I believe that's the old Carnesville Elementary. Where's Roger? Is that the, that's the old, yeah, the old, the, uh, the, what, what is now the old Carnesville Elementary School. So that's at 8.30 <clears throat> on Saturday morning. <clears throat> I think it's just for a couple of hours. And uh, we just need some volunteers for that. So if you are free Saturday morning at 8.30, uh, if you go down there, you'll find Keisha and she'll kind of get you oriented and, and pointed as to what uh, you need to do. <clears throat> now you pray for me that I get through this. I'm still coughing and sputtering and clearing my throat and all that, as you can tell. <clears throat> so we may be short again tonight. But John chapter 4, I want you to look at verse 46 tonight. <clears throat> So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, <clears throat> where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he had heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him <coughs> and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. And the nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down here, or my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him <clears throat> and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. Verse 53, So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed. And his whole house, and this again, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Well, tonight I want you to think on this thought. <clears throat> I want you just to think on the power of the word tonight. And I'm going to leave you something tonight and, and uh, leave you with something to focus on that I, I have mentioned many, many times in preaching. Uh, but tonight this word brings us to this place. Uh, and so as we think about the power of the Word, I want you to notice to begin with, though, that uh, the Bible says that in this very first part of this text that Jesus came again uh, in the Canaan of Galilee. And there the very last verse, uh, the Bible again reminds us that this is the second miracle that Jesus worked in his, that is recorded uh, in his earthly ministry when he entered into ministry. The first being the turning, turning the water to wine. So Jesus comes again into Galilee to perform another miracle. So let me just stop right there and say this because given the times that we live in, given the world scene, given uh, our national uh, <clears throat> situation, uh, given uh, the, the perilous times we live in as believers, uh, the hardships we face as those trying to live uh, for Jesus and trying to live our life for the Lord. Let, let me say this. Uh, we've got to remember today, and this is not a cliche, and too often we use it as a cliche, uh, but let me just say this, that our God, He still works miracles. Uh, now, uh, there's people who will try to explain that away, and they'll say, yeah, but... Uh, but once you say but, that negates anything you previously said prior to that. Uh, and uh, the fact of the matter is, is our God still works miracles. And so I want you to know this, uh, that not only are miracles 
uh, possible in our lives. Uh, but if we follow the Lord because He is a miracle-working God, then miracles are probable in our lives. And I think I just tried to think briefly as I prayed tonight <clears throat> about some of the miracles that we know of through history. I could tell you about stories from my life, uh, how God has sp literally spared my life on two different, uh, maybe three different occasions. Uh, you have maybe your own miracle stories. And I think about just some of the great stories in history. And really, I can't think of <clears throat> a better miracle testimony than that of George Mueller. Uh, those of you who have, who have read uh, of church history uh, or read of some, some of those giants of the faith, you're familiar with uh, George Mueller. Uh, you can get online and you can actually purchase the diary of George Mueller. And uh, I've got that, and it's interesting to go through and read. But, but George Mueller got a burden in his heart that the Lord had put there uh, to run orphanages in England. Uh, and he had no money. During that time of the 1800s, poverty was extremely great. Uh, there were many, many <clears throat> homeless children that were on the streets. Uh, and uh, the Lord put a burden on him to do this. And he wrestled with the Lord about this. And round and round they went. And he said, okay, Lord, here's the deal. Uh, he said, I'll do what you want me to do. Uh, but he said, uh, you need to know that I'm not asking anybody for money. If you want me to house children and take care of children and bring in these orphans, then you're going to have to provide for them. And so that become the arrangement between George Mueller and the Lord, is that he would bring in children and orphans, but he was never going to advertise this is what he was doing. He was never going to publicize. He was never going to go around speaking at churches, trying to drum up support and trying to uh, gather an offering together so they could make it happen. Uh, he was never going to do any of that. He said, I'm only going to take it to the Lord in prayer. And if you get his diary and you start reading this, you're going to see where there would be these great needs in the life of these orphans. Uh, or in the life of the orphanage where they were trying to support these kids. And he would just, in his diary, he'd write out a prayer, Lord, here's what we need. Uh, and then just a little while later, he would write down where that prayer was answered. And, and it would sometimes be answered down to the, to the last penny. Uh, and many times, uh, not just the one time you hear about often, but many, many times, they would get up in the mornings. Now remember, he raised in his lifetime, they took in thousands of orphans. And they ended up having about three or four large orphanages. Uh, and uh, so this was no small task. But many times his, they would get up <clears throat> and he would begin to seek the Lord and his wife would come to him and say, uh, George, we don't have any food at all for the kids today. We don't have any bread. We don't have any milk. And she would say, well, what are we going to do this time? And he would say, we're going to do this like we did the other times when we had food. He said, go ahead and set the table, get the kids cleaned up and washed up, and sit them around the table, and let's give God thanks. Now, keep in mind, giving God thanks for food you don't have, that's, that's quite a mark of a man. Uh, and so they would pray. And then as they prayed that prayer, <clears throat> just a few minutes later, a knock on the door, and it was the milkman. And he said he had, he had run his route, and before he could finish it, the wagon threw a wheel. And he was broke down, and before the milk went bad, he had to get rid of it. I want to know if George could take that milk. And a little while later, the bread man come around, and he had a bunch of bread to give away for whatever the reason was. But friends, listen, that's modern-day miracles. That's God setting a table in the wilderness. And so I want you to keep in mind tonight, as we move very quickly through this text, I want you to keep in mind that not only are miracles possible today through the hand of our Lord, uh, and by the way, that's the way it comes. The Lord works the miracles, not us. And not me, not my hand, uh, but the Lord himself works the miracles. Not only are miracles possible, uh, but if you're in need of a miracle in your life, if you know somebody that's in need of a miracle, then you need to know that for those that live by faith, that miracles are probable. Because our God has worked miracles in our yesterdays. Uh, and we know according to the Bible and prophecy that there's miracles to come in our tomorrows, uh, then that gives us a confidence and assurance that there will be miracles in our present day if we put our faith, our hope, our trust in a miracle-working God who still today has all power. Remember, Jesus says, uh, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so whatever he did yesterday, he can still do today and is able to, able to do today and willing to do today if only we'll look for those miracles uh, in our lives. So the Bible says this, this man, there's a nobleman 
uh, he, come, he come to Jesus because his son was sick. And he was near the point of death, the Bible says. <clears throat> now, a nobleman in that day, we don't really have any of those in Carnesville or in Franklin County. There's no noblemen uh, that occupy that position. Uh, but uh, in the day of Jesus, this was a man who was on the king's court. Uh, he had access to the king's throne room. Uh, he was there among royalty. <clears throat> he was given great responsibility. Uh, he was a man of power. Uh, he was a man of prestige. And one of the things that I notice, and I pray that if you're watching on Facebook Live, uh, that you will listen to what I'm about to say. But one of the things I noticed was, was this, this was not a poor man. Uh, this was not a beggar. Uh, this was not a blind man. And it wasn't a man with leprosy, nor was it a crippled man. Uh, but this was a man with power and prestige and, and position. And yet, all of that in his life, it did not exclude him from needing help from Jesus. And so we need to remember that. And I want you to know it doesn't matter if you live in the poorhouse or in the palace. There's going to be times in your life that uh, you're going to need help from the Lord. You're going to need a touch from Jesus. You're going to need His, uh, His miracle working hand and, and, the, and, uh, and, and, his, and the Spirit of God to come upon you and to bring those miracles to pass in your life. Whether you live in the presidential palace uh, or whether you live uh, on the other side of the railroad tracks, whatever it may be, uh, listen, God is able, but we're not excluded, none of us. Position, power, prestige, money, or lack of money, whatever it may be, none of that excludes us from the need of the Lord to move in our life when we have great need and we need miracles worked in our midst. Are you with me? Say amen. Nobody's with me tonight. That's wonderful. Folks, disclose your Bibles and we'll see you Sunday morning. Uh, are you with me tonight? Okay, so I'll just make sure I'm making sense up here. I, I feel like I'm speaking and saying something, uh, but you don't look like you're hearing something. Uh, so maybe, uh, <clears throat> maybe I'm not speaking as loud as I thought I was. All right, so this noble man, now watch what he does. And I, wanna, I want you to watch what he does because maybe somewhere in this church tonight, maybe uh, somewhere on Facebook Live tonight, you need to watch what I'm about to say. So this noble man, he had a son. This son was sick. He was ill. And this noble man goes and he finds Jesus. Now, let me say something here because the focus of this text is obviously on a child. So listen up. Tune in. The focus of this text is about a man's child, particularly a son. I've always found when the Lord leads me to preach on uh, something like this text that there's always a direct link among the, those that are hearing and those that are listening with the specifics of the text. And in this case, uh, it is with... Uh, a son. I preached one time <clears throat> from the book of Ruth. I preached on Ruth. And about, about this lady finding such grace in, in, uh, in David's sight. And at the invitation that day, there was two young ladies got up and come down and got saved that morning. I felt like the Lord was preaching to some women uh, that morning, though it could have been to anybody. Well, tonight, this nobleman has a son. I don't know if you're watching Facebook Live or you're sitting in the sanctuary tonight and, and you have a son that, uh, that has a great need in his life. Maybe he's near the point of death, maybe not physically at all, uh, but maybe you know that he's on the wrong road, he's on the wrong path, he's, uh, he's not in a good place, and, and he is the burden of your heart right now. There's nothing I shared with someone this morning. There's nothing that can burden our heart as great as, as that of uh, our child and, and our, our care <clears throat> and our want for the needs of our child to be met. Uh, that burdens our heart greater than, than anything. <clears throat> and so specifically, <clears throat> in this text, there's a son here uh, who has a need. And thank God, <clears throat> there's a daddy who he didn't say, let's go see the, mar let's go see the family counselor. Uh, let's go uh, see the doctor and get you on some medication. Uh, let's go see. Uh, uh, let's go see Papa or let's go see Mama. But there was this dad who realized my child has a need, uh, and there's only one place I know for that need to be met fully and completely, uh, where a miracle can be worked, and that is with Jesus. And so this burden of this text is that of a son, but uh, certainly we can apply the much broader meaning. And it can also be that of a, just of a child, whether it be a son or a daughter. 
So somebody here is watching on Facebook Live. I don't know why I keep referencing that or somebody's here in the sanctuary tonight. The great burden of your heart is for your child. And this nobleman, though he was full of prestige and wealth and power and position, he could have run to a lot of people of his day. He could have pulled some strings. He could have made some things happen. But, but he knew what his child needed most was just a touch from Jesus. He knew what his child needed most was a miracle from our Lord. Uh, and he went seeking that miracle and he went looking for that miracle. And I want to tell you something. I stand on this stage as a son who at one time uh, needed desperately uh, a miracle in my life. Uh, I had a mama and a daddy who desired God to, to work a miracle because what it would have took to bring me from where I was to here today was, was indeed a miracle. Uh, and so this noble man, uh, he turned aside from his power and his position and, and the prestige that he carried with his title. Uh, and he did the thing that he knew would work and he run to Jesus as fast as he could run to Jesus because he knew that, uh, that, that, that his, child, his child's life depended upon him. He knew nowhere else to go but to go to Jesus and ask the Lord for a miracle touch. Now watch this. So Jesus, this nobleman comes and he said, Lord, you've got to come with me. My, my child needs a touch. And Jesus, he by this time already, just in the few, first few short months of his public ministry, he had already gathered that there was this miracle-seeking crowd. They just wanted the, the miracles and the signs and the wonders. They wanted to see the razzle-dazzle. Uh, they, they wanted to see the excitement. Uh, they wanted to see all of that. And so the Lord, he assumes that this man has come with that same attitude. And the Lord is not interested in, in just putting on a light show for us. He's not, he's not interested in, in the razzle and dazzle. What he's looking for, he's just looking for some humble men and women who are just willing to live by faith and have faith that, uh, that whatever we entrust in the care of Jesus, that he'll work miracles if he has to. Uh, to bring His will to pass in their lives. Uh, and, and so Jesus didn't want no part of that crowd that was seeking the spectacular. And by the way, there's still a crowd out there today that's seeking the spectacular. If we, if we put lasers up in this church and every Sunday morning we'd darken the church and pull shades over the windows and have a laser show and have a smoke machine pumping out smoke across the stage so it looks like I'm floating in the air while I stand up here and preach and uh, and then we had just the right kind of music and we had it loud enough and, and so forth. Well, they'd be this big crowd coming because they just want to see the light show, uh, because they just want to see the, the spectacular and the, and, and the, the razzle-dazzle. Uh, what Jesus is interested in, he just wants some that, that have faith. Uh, and when he healed the ten lepers and, and only one come back, he wanted to know where the other nine was because he just wanted to be praised and worshipped in spirit and truth. Uh, and so we see that Jesus responds and with his attitude because of the crowd that had followed him. And he said, listen, I know you're coming and, and unless you see miracles and signs, you're never going to believe. You're just wanting miracles and signs and wonders. And the, the noble man by faith says this. <clears throat> he said, Lord, if you don't come down here, if you don't come down here, there's no hope for my child. And in essence, what he was saying was, was, Lord, the signs and wonders, they might be good, but what my child really needs is, is he just needs you. He needs a touch from you. My child, what they really need is, is help from you. And girls, you can go ahead and come to the piano, but listen to me while they're coming. Now listen. And so this noble man burdened about a child, and you're watching tonight or you're listening tonight, and you're burdened about a child. That's what this text is about. It's also about miracles that God works in the lives of our children. And, and so, <clears throat> when that noble man said that, when he reaffirmed his faith and he said, Lord, if you don't come, if you don't come, there's no hope. There's no hope. It's not in the signs, Lord, and it's not in the miracles. But Lord, it's, it's in you. And if through your hand you work miracles, 
then I'll be quick to praise you and give you glory. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says the Lord, Lord spoke to this man and says, you can go now because your child has been made whole. He's well. He's alive. You're going to find him and he's not dead. He's not as sick as you thought. Uh, the burden on you was great. But you come to me in the right manner. You come to me with the right attitude. You come to me in total dependence that it wasn't going to be signs and wonders that, that brought a miracle in the life of your child. But you come to me believing that it was me and only me. See, that's what you need to understand is He is our miracle. And He is our miracle in the life of our child. And the Bible says this. The Bible said that this man got up and left. Now watch this. Here's the power of the Word. The Bible says this man got up and he believed the words of Jesus. Now listen, watch this. He got up and he believed the words of Jesus. See, signs and wonders will pass one day. But the Bible says the word will stand forever. And heaven and earth will pass away. But my word shall stand forever, the Lord said. And so watch this. Here's what I've preached before, but I'm driving it home to you tonight because here's exactly what you need to do. And so you're watching on Facebook Live or you're here tonight and you're listening. The burden of your heart is your child. Maybe they're not sick unto death. Maybe there's nothing overly critical or overly major happening in their life right now, but, but the burden of every mom and daddy's heart almost every day of the week, sometimes more, of us, more than others, sometimes over certain things, you grieve for them. You stay broken hearted for them. You're heavy hearted for them. I find as my children are reaching the age where they're heading out in life and trying to make uh, career decisions and, and, and various decisions at that age in life that, that it's a worry on my soul uh, about the next steps that they take. Uh, and, and so this nobleman, he believed the word of the Lord and it was him believing the word of the Lord that brought the miracle into the life of this child and that child was healed at that moment when he believed the word of the Lord. And so watch this. I want to, I want to give you this now. Listen. <clears throat> so concerning this topic, your child, concerning this topic, that's what the text is about. That's where we were at in line to come to tonight. Just following the Lord and taking what's next. And John, this child of yours, when is the last time? <clears throat> or have you ever or have you yet? Because I know at the end of this service tonight, you're going to do it. You may do it here, you may do it at home. But what you really need is, is you need a word from the Lord. That's what you need. You don't need a word from Preacher Dave. You don't need a word from a visiting evangelist. You don't need a word from a singer. But when it comes to your child and the burden you have in your heart about your child, you, you need a word from the Lord. And I'm not talking about something you feel like that he spoke to your heart. Some, I don't talk about, I'm not talking about how that you found a nice little Facebook or Instagram quote and it was so hallmarky that it moved you to tears and you're claiming that little thought is your promise for your child. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about when have you taken the word or your devotional and you said, Lord, the burden in my heart is my child. <clears throat> and Lord, I need a verse. I, I need something from your word. Because what preacher David stands to say and says, well, it, it could fail you. What mamma and papa might say to you, well, I know they're wise and I've got some of the wisest counsel of my life from my grandpa. But that could fail you. But see, what you really need is, is you need just a word from the Lord. You need a verse. <clears throat> you need something you can hold to that you know is not going to fail you. And, and, when, and here's the thing. <clears throat> when you've got a burden in your heart, and you've sought the Lord with all of your heart. <clears throat> and the Lord gives you a word. Friend, I want you to understand, that is a promise. And you're talking about making your burden a little lighter. You, you're talking about making your heart a little full. When you know you have, subject tonight is your child. When you know you have went to the Lord over your child, and then the Lord has spoke to you a verse, 
give you some words there and he's made a promise directly to you that the God of the universe would look down on little old nothing, me and you, and he would speak a promise to us. And then you can take that verse and you can put it to memory. You could tuck it away in your heart. You can write it on a sticky note and put it on your dashboard. <clears throat> you can put it on your refrigerator. You can highlight it in your devotional or in your Bible and leave, it, leave your Bible laying open on that spot. <clears throat> and you can keep that verse to memory. And let that be what you hang on to and let that be what you hold to until God's promise comes true. When God makes you a promise, friend, listen to me. I mean, the economy may fall, so the stock market may crash, <clears throat> America may crumble one day, and she's going to according to the Word of God. She won't, even be, she won't even exist one day. All of that can happen around us. Hell may fall around us. Demons may fly around us. But you need to know that if, you, if God has spoken a word to you, then friend, you just need to stand there by faith and hang on because it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. When God speaks something, He is God. He is the final authority when He gives you His word. And so when you bring that child, because that's what we're dealing with here, we're bringing, we're bringing a, we've got a noble man who's got a son that he's burdened for. He knows nothing else to do but go to Jesus with it. But it wasn't just that. That wasn't enough. He got a word from Jesus. And when he got that word and he believed, it was then, it was then at that moment that his son was healed and a miracle was delivered. And so what you need to do tonight is by faith is you need to, you need to tell the Lord, Lord, I need a word from you. I, I don't just need a little stirring in my heart. I, I don't need just a little, um, a little, little, little nudge encouraging me, but, but Lord, from your word, I need a word. Give me a promise so that when I lay down at night, I can look to heaven and smile knowing that whatever it is my child's going through, whatever it is they're walking in, Whatever path it is they're following or wherever they're stumbling around, I can lay down and smile at night because I know God's given me a word for that child. And I can have faith that they are in hands so much bigger than mine. So much bigger than mine. One of my, I shared this this morning, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, <clears throat> and your parents are going to agree with me, most difficult thing I've ever done in life is trusting God with my children. I, I'm a hands-on kind of person. I, I want to I wanna lead if there's a need of a leader. Uh, I want to take charge. I want to I I make things happen. I want to I get to the task. I'm task-focused and task-oriented and, and, and you know, I want to accomplish the objectives, whatever that may be. And what I found out is that when it comes to our children, especially as they grow older, we're, we're helpless. We, we just can't do it all. Yeah, when they're three on the playground, I can protect them. When they skin a knee, I can jerk them up and kiss it and make it better. I can put a Band-Aid on it. I can fix things. But when they're 16 and 19 and 21 and so forth, and there's a lot of things Dad just can't do. And one of the hardest things I've ever am learning to do is to trust God with my children. But here's what I want you to know that I, that the Lord spoke to me is this, is that God loves your children far more than you could ever love your children. He loves your children greater than you will ever love your child. Think about how much you love your child. The Lord loves your child more than that. Preacher, how do you know that? Give me some Bible for that. How about this? How about God loves your children so much that he saw your child in their lost condition. He sent his son Jesus to die to save your child. That's how much God loves your child. So you can trust him. I'm telling you, he's trustworthy. But you're fretting and you're burdened and your heartache and, and, and the trouble of your soul, it will be much easier, much lighter 
If you just ask the Lord, Lord, I need just need a word. Lord, through my devotion, please give me a word. Speak to me plainly from your word. I need a verse to hang on to. I need a verse to, to cling to. I have a child that has my heart troubled, worried. God, if you just give me a verse, speak to me. And I'm telling you, God will do it. He don't want you to stumble around in darkness and trying to figure this out on your own or trying to hold it together on your own. But He'll give you a word. And then you believe it and you memorize it and you post it. You stick it around the house. And every day you look at that word. <laughs> and then you just sit back and you watch God move. I say this, then I give the invitation. I'm telling you folks, listen. I've been in situations before, I'd like to say situations, but situations where, where I needed the word and God give me a word. And when I examined that situation from human eyes, laid out the details of it, thoroughly examined it, I looked at it and it was an, an impossible situation. No outs, no hope, no chance. Impossible. The only catch was, was the Lord to give me a word. The Lord to give me a verse. Actually, many verses that all pertain to this impossible situation. And many times I prayed and I said, Lord, I've examined it. I've looked at it. I've calculated it. I've, tabula I've, I've tabbed it all up. And Lord, without a doubt, it's an impossible situation. And without a doubt, it's hopeless. This is the end. But Lord, you've given me a verse. You've given me verses. And Lord, that's all i got to hold to. And Lord, I want you to know that if the ship sinks, Lord, I want you to know that if it proves to be a hopeless situation, Lord, I want you to know that if it all turns out impossible and I lay down in the floor and die because of it, then I'm going to lay down and die holding on to the promise you give me because I believe in your word. I got news for you. I didn't lay down in the floor and die because of an impossible situation. I didn't give up hope. And I don't care what all the figures and the statistics and the numbers, the plan and all of that said God had the final say and he gave me a word and I can tell you today mama, I can tell you today daddy, when God speaks a word to you, he'll see to it that he's true, if he has to move heaven upon this earth he'll do so to prove his word true in your life and in this situation in the life of your child I'm going to ask you to stand if you're watching on Facebook Live, I'm going to ask you to get on your face in your living room, in your kitchen, out on your back porch, and you get down and you let the Lord know, Lord, I've got a child I'm worried about, and I need a word from you. And if you're here tonight and you've got a child that you need a word for, I'm just going to ask you to come as the girls sing and ask the Lord, Lord, please give me a word. Give me a word of hope, a word of promise, so it'll lighten my weary heart. You come, girls, go ahead and sing quickly.